Uh, we're celebrating the Feast of St. Mary and we have a great festival uh, that we have every year. This is the 24th year that we celebrate the Feast of St. Mary with a great festival where we introduce uh, the community around us to St. Mary and to our church and we enjoy together the festivities. In fact, people travel distances. I know people who've come even from Texas to celebrate the Feast of St. Mary with the church in Cleveland, with St. Mark's Church in Cleveland. And people have traveled even from Egypt to celebrate this feast here. And it is wonderful that at a time when we're celebrating St. Mary and celebrating the Feast of St. Mary and all the activities we have are in the name of St. Mary. And we know how much the Lord cherished and loved his mother and taught us to uh, honor her and respect her and learn from her life that the reading in the gospel today is uh, very unique because in the reading in the gospel today the Lord was sitting with his disciples and there were many people sitting around him where he was teaching them and he was probably, he was probably late coming back for dinner or something so his mother uh, comes to find him, comes to look for him. And the gospel tells us, then his brothers and his mother came and standing outside, they sent to him calling him. You're late for dinner. And the multitude was sitting around him and they said to him, look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. But he answered them saying, who is my mother or my brothers? And he looked around in a circle at those who sat about him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. The Lord who honors his mother, respects her, shows us to honor her ourselves and love her and learn from her life, is he denying his mother and looking around at others to say, this is my brother, my sister, and my mother? Of course not. But he is teaching us a very important lesson. Even now when we are celebrating the Feast of St. Mary and having all this activity in the name of St. Mary, that we have to have single-mindedness, single purpose in life. The Lord is making it very clear that even when it comes to his mother, his own mother, who he honors, his relation with her is not built on physical connection, but on love, on a connection beyond the physical. And he has no two purposes in his mind. He has one purpose, and that purpose is the purpose of love, of salvation to mankind, that makes everyone around him, his brother, his sister, and his mother. And he wants to teach us today to have that single-mindedness in life, the single purpose. In fact, when we read the rest of the gospel that we are given today, it talks about an interesting event when the people around the Lord, watching him working miracles, were saying, this man must be possessed by Satan. The strength and the power he has is unusual. It must be from an, another world. It must be Satan. He is demon-possessed, or he, is, he has Beelzebub which is another name for Satan. And by the ruler of demons, he casts out demons. And the Lord answered them clearly and said, how can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And that's the principle the Lord wants us to live with. If a kingdom is divided on itself, against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And the Lord points to our kingdom. Your own life is your kingdom. You are king or queen of your own life, of your own kingdom. Is your kingdom divided against itself? Or does it have a single purpose? Is our purpose in life clear? And do we follow everything we do for that purpose? Or is our kingdom divided against itself? The Lord clearly teaches us that his kingdom was one, and his kingdom was the salvation of mankind. For this purpose he came, for this purpose he performed miracles, for this purpose he taught, for 
This purpose he rose on the cross. For this purpose he suffered. For this purpose he accepted death. And for this purpose he is risen. For one purpose, my salvation, your salvation, the salvation of mankind. What is the purpose of your kingdom? And throughout the readings today that we heard from the epistle uh, of St. Paul to the Romans, he talks about people who teach different kinds of teachings that divide the church. And he says, have one purpose and one teaching. In the epistle of St. Peter, we hear about submission. And he says, you should not be submitting because of mistakes you've done, because that is no submission. The true submission is submission despite doing good, that you accept bad behavior or bad attitudes. And yet you accept it because you submit for one purpose. You're submitting to the Lord. In the book of Acts, St. Paul is surrounded by people knowing that he was going to Jerusalem to suffer. And they're trying to persuade him not to go to Jerusalem. And he asks them, you want me to not go where the Lord wants me, even if there is suffering in it? I have one single purpose in life. If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. I'll tell you an interesting story about a man named Watchman Nee. Some of you might have heard or read some of his books. Watchman Nee is a Chinese man who lived in the 1940s and 1950s when China was an iron gate communist country. Still is quite so, but it was extreme at the time of the 1940s and 50s where no gospels were allowed in China, no preaching was allowed in China, no churches were allowed in China. Watchman Nee is a Chinese man who met the Lord and knew the Lord and believed in Christ and became a Christian. Not only that, he devoted his life to serve the Lord and to spread the name of Jesus all over his own countrymen in China. At the time, the only way of transportation was either animals or trains. There was an excellent train system. So Watchman Nee used to use the train to hop from one city to another to preach the gospel. He was not allowed to do that, but he committed his life to do it. He had one single purpose. And the trains were cheap trains, dirty trains, very uh, unlike what you're used to, no comfort in those trains. They were uh, very simple cabins that had, each cabin had two rows that allowed four people to sit, two on each side. So he hops on a train from one village to another. And when he gets on the train, he walks through the corridor until he finds a, an empty seat in a cabin where there were three men sitting. So he sits in the fourth seat. And the men, once he said, they say, oh, we are so happy you are here because the train ride is very long and we needed a fourth partner. And he says, okay, I'm here. Fourth partner for what? They said, we have a game of cards that we're going to play to kill time while we're traveling. And we are three, and it needs four. So you're now number four. We need you to play the game of cards with us. Give us a hand. And they start cutting the cards to start playing. And he says, please stop. One moment. And they said, OK. He closes his eyes and uh, leans his head and prays for a moment silently. And he says, I can't really play the game with you. And they said, why? He says, because these hands that you're asking me to give in the game are not my hands. And they look funny at him. What do you mean they're not your hands? He says, there is an owner for these hands. And I asked the owner. And they say, and what did the owner say? He says, the owner does not approve. And they look at him like he is a crazy man. And they tell him, what do you mean the owner does not approve? And he uses this moment to tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for him, saved his life, and changed him into his servant, the Lord's servant, to the point where his hands are not his hands. His feet are not his feet. His eyes are not his eyes, but they are the Lord's. 
And he lives for one single purpose. Everything he does, everything he says, everywhere he goes, everyone he meets, every minute in his life is for one purpose. He has no divided kingdom. Because a kingdom divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And he lives for one purpose, for the Lord. And from that moment, he uses the hours that are left in the trip to preach the Lord Christ to these men. And they start asking questions. And he brings their minds to know the Lord Jesus Christ. How is your kingdom? What is your purpose? Is our life divided or do we know clearly what our purpose in life is? Do I know why do I work very hard? Do I know why I try to earn more money? Do I know why I go on vacation with certain people? Do I know why do I come to church? Do I know who I choose for friends and why I choose them for? Do I know what I allow myself to watch on TV? Do I know how I use my time? A kingdom is divided against itself. That kingdom cannot stand. May the Lord give us that our kingdom has a single purpose. And that purpose is the glory of his name. Is to use our life, our time, our talents, our abilities for the glory of his name. And when we accept criticism, or we accept difficulties, or we accept tribulations, we accept them not again as if they are meant to us specifically, but they are meant to us as men and women who are living for his name. This way we are able to accept these things with an open heart, with an open mind, and with strength and with courage. Like St. Paul was willing to accept going to Jerusalem, yet knowing he is going to suffer, but he had a single purpose for his life. And because of that, even suffering became tolerable. Even difficulties became acceptable because it was for the glory of his name. May the Lord bless us in these days and give us a wonderful time enjoying the Feast of St. Mary and remembering that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Glory be to God forever. Amen.